and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Verse 17. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. We lack. You know, we go on visitation, we go so winning. What's one of the main things we need to do that we need to share with the individual that we're interceding with? Show them their lack. Their lack of what? Their lack of Christ. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we, are, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? No. Oh, God forbid. Verse 18. For if I build again, for if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Verse 19. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. Now verse 20 and 21 ties all this in. Look what Paul states. I want, we're going to read each, each we're going to read each statement here. I am crucified with Christ. What does that mean to you? Think about it. Think about it. I am crucified with Christ. Crucifixion was a means of execution. Execution is is a uh, is is a means of of taking one's Life. I am crucified with Christ. But look what he says. Nevertheless, I live. I have my being. I think. I walk. I talk. I'm breathing. Hmm. But nevertheless, I live. But look at this. Look at that next statement. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. He dwells in me. My thoughts, my soul. My, my mind, my will, my emotions. Everything should express, everything about me should express Him. It should reflect Him in my words, in my speech, in my actions, in my reactions. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Now look at this. And the life which I now live in the flesh. Right here, now, today. I live by the faith of the Son of God. There it is again. Three times he states his faith. Who loved me and gave himself for me. Well, let's go to verse 21. 
I do not frustrate the grace of God. Hmm. Grace means unmerited favor, but it also means His work. His work, not my work. His work. The Bible says, by grace are ye saved, by the grace of God that hit Him going to, to the cross. That was His work. The whole crucifixion the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That was His. I do not frustrate the grace of God. I don't get in the way. Of what He wants to do in my life. His work in me. It's a continuous, continuing process until one day we see Him in heaven. I do not quench the Holy Spirit. I don't grieve Him. I don't want to do that. I do not frustrate the grace of God for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, just guide us and direct us through this Sunday school lesson, Lord. Lord, teach us how to learn. Teach us about ourselves. Father, just guide and direct each word. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I am crucified with Christ. Remember our position in Christ. We are crucified with Christ. Why don't we reflect that? In the book of Romans, chapter 6, verses 6 through 7, says this Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. My old ways, my old thoughts, that, 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 that part of me, which is all of me. Should have been crucified with him. Everything. All of it. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. The body of sin. Now, which part of the, of the anatomy of a human being does the devil target? Come on, talk to me. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Throw them fiery darts too. And he's relentless. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. My whole, my whole view of life, my whole thought process. Has to be. Renewed. The way I. Believe. What do you think being born again means? 
Let's go and meet right quick to Psalm 51. Look at David. Look at what David prayed. We'll read a little bit of this. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Look at what he says in verse 3. For I acknowledge my transgressions. I realize what I have done. I've seen. I, I take responsibility. And my sin is ever before me. Verse 4 says, Against thee, thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Look at this. Verse 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Hmm. Verse 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the outward part. Is that what it says? No. In here. Way down. All that has to be, God has to, the, to, to renew it from the inside out. Okay. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the, look at this, the hidden parts. Now there's there's the tough part for a lot of people. That hidden part. See, the Lord's a gentleman. He only goes in where he's welcomed. Are you with me? He won't intrude. We have to welcome him into that hidden part so he can clean it all. A lot of us carry all this stuff. It's hidden. No one else knows about it. And it hinders us. It really does. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be white as, whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Look at this, verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Again, Romans 6, verses 6 through 7, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Before God can do anything with us, we must first come to the conclusion that without God's power on us, without the indwelling Holy Spirit, we are helpless. Romans chapter 7, verse 24 says this, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Think with me. See, the power to gain victories comes only through Christ living in us and us abiding in Him. You need to abide there. You need to stay there. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. All things. 
Galatians chapter 6, verses 7 through 8, it says, and this says this, be not deceived or misled. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth or what he scatters with his speech, with his character, with his life, That shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption or ruin. And that's that's that fleshly part, that flesh part could also mean desire. For he that soweth to his flesh or desire shall in the flesh reap corruption or ruin. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now, the law of sowing and reaping. We are responsible for where we are today. Where are you at in life today? We are reaping what we have previously sown. Every one of us. Again, it says, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Okay, the first step to descending path of sowing to the flesh. We are deceived by the devil. And also we are deceived by our own hearts. Sometimes our own heart will deceive us. And it's and it's mainly because we have a we have a a relationship with God that it's weak. Yeah, we'll come to church and uh, maybe we'll stay for the invitation or not or maybe I'll be in Sunday school, maybe. I'll come to prayer. I mean, I'll come to prayer night on Thursday nights if if I feel like it. See, that type of relationship is a weak relationship. And um, that's when you give a foothold to the serpent. And that's when he starts to try to mix things up in your mind and in your heart. And we've got to be very careful when we're living in that type of condition. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 says, Trust the Lord with all thine heart. But look at this. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't do it. Do you realize that your pastor here, I don't even trust myself. I have to go to the Bible. I make my decisions by this. Because I don't trust myself. Everything I ever put my hand to, I messed it up. Why God placed me as a pastor, I have no idea. Yet. But I'll follow Him. Just like a child, because that's all I am. He gives me things, I'll write them down, and I'll study them out, and I'll work it out. Second step to the path of sowing to the flesh. We sow our seed. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 
uh, I believe in verse 6, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. What is he saying? I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Are you with me? Think with me. I pray you're writing things down. Okay. Heeding the Bible. Heeding the Bible helps us avoid satanic deception. Heeding the Bible helps us avoid satanic deception. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul, look at that, soul and spirit. Okay. Soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. And look at this, and is a discerner a discerner of, look at this, the thoughts and intents of the heart. Okay, so I got my flesh. And my soul. And I have my spirit. Hmm. Why does the devil hate me so much? Because we were created like God. See, we got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Those three are one. I have my flesh, I have my soul, and I have my spirit. These three are one. I'm one person. We have a habit of sowing to our flesh. And our soul sees that, receives the message, which is our mind, will, and our emotions. Then it goes back to the body, and the body carries it out. Does that make sense? Think with me. Everything I take in here goes in here. goes in here. We dwell on those things. And if we dwell on them long enough, guess what? Our body's going to carry it out. Now think with me, guys. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, All Scripture, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine that which is right, and uh, uh, for reproof, that which is not right, for correction, that how to get right, for instruction in righteousness, and how to stay right. 
realize your new identity in Christ. Realize who you are and what you are now. Are you saved this morning? Are you a child of God? Do you know that without a shadow of a doubt? See, it's more than just coming to church, coming to Sunday school. It's a personal relationship with the one who died for you, gave his life for you. And what he wants to do with you while you dwell on this earth. You can reach heights on this planet you thought never possible if you would only listen. How has God spoken to you this week? Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. That's my new identity. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, it says this, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I'm new. Are we thinking? Are we listening? With our new identity in Christ, we, we are to yield. What does yield mean? Doesn't mean stop. Yeah, you got the right. You, you yield. You slow down. And what do you do when you yield? You're looking. You're paying attention. You're being what? Cautious. Especially when we're driving, huh? Well, some of us, anyway. <laughs> oh, Miss Jackie. Some of us. <laughs> Think about it. And Miss Dar too, man. You see her pulling into the parking lot? <laughs> it's like, wow. You, 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 you yield. You're cautious. You're, you're, you're looking. You're paying attention. But you're not stopping. Keep, keep going. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things, all things, all means all, and that's all that it means. All things are become new. And again, with our new identity in Christ, we are to yield to his leading. God leads you. Are you paying attention? Are you that close to him that you know, that you know, that you know, that you know that it's his voice? I'm here, Lord. I'm paying attention. It's been so long since I heard your voice. Oh God, thank you for not giving up on me. I'm here. John chapter 15 verse 7 says, If ye abide in me. If ye abide in me. There's where you need to stay.
Don't let nothing, no one, criticism, backbiting, gossip, nonsense, foolishness. Don't let nothing move you from that position. You abide in Him. There's nothing more important, nothing more sweeter than that. Christ living in us is our only hope of ever glorifying God. <laughs> That's it. Are you glorifying God with your lifestyle? With your attitude? With your behavior. You, as a child of God, do you glorify Him with your walk, with your talk? Do I? I'm a human. You know, I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes I fall. How about you? I got blood running through my veins just like you do. You know what? It's the same color too. I ain't perfect just because I'm a preacher or a pastor. That doesn't mean nothing. What matters if you stay abiding in Him. That's what matters. Some of us try to fit in some kind of holy mold that doesn't work. All it does is frustrates you. What you got to do is be real. Be real with yourself. Be real with others. And be real with God. This is me. Yeah. I said this Friday night. There are three people living inside of us. Right now. The one I say I am. The one others think I am. And the one God knows I am. With our new identity in Christ, we are to yield to His leading. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27 says this, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery. Which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Are you bringing the right opinion of God? The right opinion of Christianity. What you believe in. What you stand for. Those are good thoughts. You see, your identity is such that who you are in Christ determines how you behave. It determines how you react to, to distasteful things towards you. Think about Christ. They called him a liar. They called him a devil. Called him a drunkard. A wine bibber. Called him a fraud. Huh. 
on the cross, the Father forgive them. Because they don't know what they do. Are we more important than Him? Do we deserve justice? Think about it. Your identity is such that who you are in Christ determines how you behave. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Recognize the power of His faith. (laughs) See? Christianity is more than just coming over here, sitting in a chair and Listening to this preacher yell and give Miss Myrna an earache and all this stuff. It's more than that. Are you with me? It's more than just showing up. You see, it's getting plugged in like that outlet there. I'm going to get plugged in, boom, into this whole thing. And I want to do something for Christ. I want to do something for 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 the people here in this community. I want to do something. I want to I want to I want to make a positive outcome of what this church, Good News Baptist Church in Dulce, New Mexico is all about. I want to make a difference. Through Christ leading me. You know what I see? Even when I was just visiting and filling the pulpit, the youth of this place, it tore, it tears my heart out to see how they're growing up and where they're going with their lives. It busts me, man. What future is there? And what are we doing as, as, as the elders of this place to make a difference for these guys coming up after us? I go out. I'm here on Tuesdays. I go out, stay here till about 6.30, waiting. Sometimes people show up, sometimes they don't. I go out during the week. I go out and I talk to people when I go and uh, take the, the thing to the bank over there. I try to talk to the young people of this place. You know what they tell me? I'm traditional like my parents. I say, well, what is Traditional. They usually don't know what to say because they don't know. Or they say, yeah, I know that church. I've been there once, a couple of times. I say, well, are you saying, yeah, I've done that. I said, well, what did you do? Definition of faith. It's a personal measurement of the level of confidence in what Christ has done and will do in, through, and for us. Hebrews 11.1, now faith is a substance or foundation of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. (laughs) 
that reflection of Christ simply, guess what? Is not there. Now that brings me to this question. Why? And I ask God, what's going on? Am I the right person for this place? I was praying that right up here just before Sunday school. Does someone else need to be here? See, these are questions that run through a pastor's heart and mind. Faith depends on its object. What are you putting your faith in? Or who are you putting your faith in? Or what are you putting your faith in? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5 says, having a form, a form, or a mold, or, or, or a sculpture, a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. There's where a lot of Christians are at today. They say the prayers. They say all this. But there's a lack, a shortcoming in here. And so we pray amiss. It's like 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 your bow and arrows, you're shooting. You come close to the mark, but you're not hitting it. You're 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 hitting uh, uh, the target. There's a lack. You have not hit the bullseye. Faith depends on its object. The depth of our faith is determined by the depth of our knowledge of the object in which we place our faith. Is everybody all right? We 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 we're, we're on track. Everyone understand what's going on? <laughs> we okay? I know I got a little bit deep. I know I did. But we need it. See this ground? It's like the ground outside. It's hard, man. I tried digging holes for the trees, Mrs. Mrs. Wager. Boy, I had to get the pickaxe out and start digging holes out there. I thought it was like an album group, just get a shovel. It wasn't like that. So we gotta we gotta plow up this fallow ground. Get it in get that plow in there deep and get everything moving again. I know sometimes what I teach and preach and It's deep. It's a little rough. But we got to shake things up a little bit. Shake out all the all the excess we don't need. And get right back down to that simple form as a child. And surrender to his will. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I praise thy name. Guide and direct us, Lord, to the rest of this service. I'm so honored that Brother Pastor Dan and, and the missus is here. So honor that, that, that Lester came and visit with us. He just pulled in. I pray, Father, you just touch his life. 
wherever he's at right now in his heart and mind. Just guide and direct him. Thank you for those that came. To the faithful few, Lord, just bless them and touch their lives. Be with Brother Rome at home. Just put it in his heart that he's loved and we're thinking about him and praying for him. And we miss him. Lord, just bless the upcoming hour. May your name be honored and glorified. And I pray it was in this hour. Lord, for thou art worthy. Thank you for all you do and all the dads in this place. I wish them happy Father's Day. We love you and we praise thy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, folks. God bless you. I hope that was a blessing for you.